23 Minecraft things that are actually possible. Minecraft is a sandbox game, meaning that sometimes we're able to pull off some wild stunts, stuff that even by the game zone rules seems out of place. And so today, we're looking at those strange Minecraft concepts that actually work. And hey, the YouTube businessman bets me that you can't subscribe to the channel before I reach the roof. So to prove them wrong, float over to that red sub button. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Number one, famously, water and lava don't mix, or at least not without making some cobblestone or obsidian in the process. But with the new 1.17 update, there's actually a way to put both these two together in harmony. And go figure, it's thanks to the Ollie coated cauldron. Now, we've talked in the past about just how screwy this block is, and here it's no different. Since with the new lava cauldrons, we're fully capable to put these underwater like so and have a lava lamp in the deep blue, which is cool, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Number two. Now, thankfully, Java Minecraft doesn't have much for microtransactions, but that does leave us behind in terms of cosmetics, or rather, it would if we didn't have this command. You see, with the slash item replace command, we can put blocks and items on our armor slots that we couldn't normally. So, sure, Steve doesn't normally have a mohawk, but put an anvil on your helmet and the problem's solved. Or you can add an emerald to your head and look like a sim. Really, the possibilities here are quite open, so now it's all up to you to find your favorite one. Number three. So, Mojang has gone on the record against adding in vertical slaps, which has spawned its fair share of debates. And while I'm not trying to argue either side, I will mention that, for what it's worth, it is a little possible right now. See, through the help of walls and TNT, it's possible to to glitch out the block's connectivity and leave a vertical slab floating like so. Now, it's not easy enough to do to justify putting a bunch of these in your build, but it is a cool way to break Mojang's rules. And if you ask me, it's worth doing just for that. Number four. If you've played on Bedrock Edition, then you know that this version is full of some pretty wild stuff. And my favorite of which might just be this glitch. You see, while zip lines in Java normally require command blocks or mods, here, we're able to do it all with a glitch. As it is, if you start swimming in the water and then exit with a roof overhead, you can still glide along the blocks while swimming, meaning all we need is a few chains and a path to make a fully functional zip line, which I think is just awesome. Number five. Now, saving yourself from a fall with a water bucket is nothing new. And if you ask me, it's been done to death. So how about we try to get a bit more creative for our MLG save and turn to potions instead? No joke, using something like a slow falling potion, we're capable to make a safe landing from a dangerous fall. And to pull this off, the technique isn't too different from what it is for the water bucket, since it all hinges on pressing right click at the right time. And if you do that, your legs will Thank you. Number six. If you've been to the end, you've surely come across this little guy, better known as the Shulker. But while we're all familiar with them, you maybe haven't seen one like this. As it turns out, even though we commonly see them in their purple hue, Shulkers can be dyed along the full spectrum of colors. Now, in Java, the way that we do this is by using the scoreboard commands and changing their teams, but in Bedrock, it's actually as simple as splashing them with a fistful of dye. And then there you have it, the change is made. Number seven. When you build something cool in Minecraft, you might need the right angle to show it off. And despite what it says, the built-in cinematic camera doesn't always cut it. So instead, why don't we take after modern cinematographers and use a drone shot instead? Now, obviously, you're not flying something like this in a Minecraft world, but with a pair of wings and a slow falling potion, we can actually get some pretty smooth shots. So if your build requires something a little bit more than a standard walk around, this might be the best way to show it off to your friends. Number eight, the community is always looking for ways to push Minecraft to its limits. And if you've played parkour, then you know the jumping is no exception. And that'd be how the Olympians of the game have found a vanilla way to clear eight blocks with ease. And folks, it's all done without the speed effect. As you can see, if we build up the right amount of speed on this path, we can launch ourselves over the gap with no problem. So if you're looking for the gold medal in the long jump category, then maybe grab some ice and trap doors and you'll have that record locked down. Number nine. Now, hitboxes in Minecraft are a funny thing. And while sure, there are plenty of glitches that manipulate this, we can also do some weird things in the base game. For example, let's take a look at crawling. However, the tunnel that we're using this time might be a bit more cramped than you're used to. But even even then, we can surely crawl within the tiny space between these piston heads. Which is cool, but really, I've got no practical reason on why to do this. And for your safety, I'd recommend getting out of there before someone flips the lever. Number 10. Clearly, Steve and Alex are pretty strong. I mean, how else would they be able to carry around mass amounts of stone and food in their inventories? But while we're used to holding blocks and items, what if we tried to carry a mob instead? And no, I'm not talking about a parrot on your shoulder, but rather, doing something like this. Because of the way that hitbox collisions work in Bedrock, we're able to carry mobs like Enderman up and down the ladders like so, which looks uncomfortable for the both of us, to say the least. Number 11. Now, my eyesight isn't perfect, but even with 2020 vision, I imagine it's pretty hard to see blocks from this far away. Or at least, it would be if we didn't have some help. Now, sure, we could use the spyglass item from the recent Caves and Cliffs update, but folks, that only goes so far. So, what we really need to do for a super zoom in is to mix together 
low FOV, max slowness, the spyglass, and then the optifine zoom to top it all off. And with those folks, even the Farlands will look just like they're in your backyard. Number 12. So famously, Minecraft has had the ability to see yourself in third person. And while that F5 functionality is nice, it's not exactly comprehensive, meaning that certain angles are still off limits. But we might have a way to fix that. Because for whatever reason, if you want to see yourself fall into bed, all we need is a trap door to make it happen. Yeah, no joke. If we crawl into this and then fall asleep, we can see the player's body collapse into the bed like so, which almost looks like an intentional animation, even if it's just an illusion. Number 13. Over the years, Minecraft has steadily added new pets to choose from. While everyone else opts for a dog or maybe the new axolotl, what if you want something a bit more unique? Well, there is a solution, albeit a weird one. Now, of course, the main thing that you're looking for with a pet is loyalty. So why don't go straight to the source with a loyalty three trident? No kidding, what this thing lacks in pulse, it apparently makes up for a companionship. So simply throw the thing, fill up your inventory slots, and then you can watch it follow you around. Number 14. Every now and then, you've got to break the laws of physics. And while Minecraft doesn't exactly abide by gravity, that doesn't mean we can't break its own rules too. And one of my favorite ways to do that might just be these so-called illegal water and lava source blocks. After laying out the proper arrangement of sticky pistons and redstone, we can just about glitch out the game. And then, even after removing the surrounding blocks, we can still interact with these as normal source blocks. So if you're looking for a floating art piece to put in your base, this might do the trick. Number 15. When you're playing in PvP, sometimes the retreat is just as important as the attack. But without turning around, it's hard to get much speed on that escape. Though, that could all change with the right key presses. As it is in Bedrock Edition, if you sprint forward and then backpedal while still holding down the sprint button, we can move with the same speed going the other way. And hey, we can even still jump and attack while we're backing up, making this pretty well equipped for combat. And it's definitely worth a try during your next 1v1. Number 16. As the classic saying goes, true love knows no bounds. And if you need any more proof, then there's actually an experiment that we could use within Minecraft. If we set up a mob on either side of this wall, then we can feed them as usual and get a baby just the same. Which I'm not going to argue that that makes any sense, but it's clearly possible. So if you're looking to create a tragic love story or next cow farm, then I guess this is a way to do that. Number 17. When I mention water travel, you're maybe thinking of something like this. Or this, but probably not this. Which is unfortunate, because it turns out that minecarts can be surprisingly fun to ride over the river. If you line the underbelly of a nearby lake with soul sand, then the bubbles provide a powerful enough stream to float our cart across. And hey, if you play on bedrock, these bubbles don't break your momentum, meaning we can make a pretty fun roller coaster to ride through the roaring tides. So next time you're crafting, maybe switch out those five planks for some iron instead. Number 18. Despite what you might think, these elytra wings are not much for flying, more so just hovering. So if you don't have the proper rocket fuel, it's hard to get off the ground. Unless, of course, you've got the time and right. Since if we take an elytra and some well-timed bounces, it's possible to supercharge our jump height. And while we only got a 4.5 blocks in our testing, some players report a potential 5.5 blocks and beyond if you nail the technique, which is just crazy to see. Number 19. As we've talked about in the past, campfires can have a chunk of benefits over their furnace counterparts. And while that's true, it can still be quite annoying for one of these to fizzle out. So whether it was your friend with a shovel or a rainstorm overhead, the fact still remains that we gotta reignite this thing. And while a flint and steel would be the obvious choice, we've actually got some much stranger options to use. See, in certain cases, it's possible to light the campfire using a fire aspect sword, a book, or even yourself to catch the flame. And I'll let you guess which one's the safer option. Number 20. The world World Border is a weird fixture in Minecraft, and while others have used it to create illegal double slab variants, I think we should just ditch the border entirely. And as so, to do our own attempt at a Wind Waker barrier skip, all we need is a boat and some persistence. By simply placing the boat halfway through the barrier, we can hop in and row ourselves right over to the outer limits. And then, stranger still might be that by going far enough, the boat can even break down into planks and sticks, just like it used to in the past. Number 21. The way that Minecraft is, it's really easy to build a pillar, but really awkward to build downwards. And without a water source to cling to, most of us might think that such a thing is impossible. But that's just not true. If we just so happen to have two trapdoors on hand, then we can use this crawl technique like so to slowly maneuver ourselves down the path. Is it tedious? Absolutely. But the fact still remains that if you need to build downwards in a pinch, this might be your best bet. Number 22. Killing the ender dragon is a rite of passage. And while it's a feat to slay the beast in any amount of time, it's obviously impressive to speedrun the fight as well. Which is probably why so many of us have brought 
op-eds to the end to do just that. But were you aware of just how fast this strategy allows for? Because if you're willing to learn the time and precision for placing the beds just right, it's possible to kill the dragon in just one perch. And folks, that's insane. So if you can do it, you have every right to be proud of yourself. Number 23. A long-held fact in Minecraft is that the end and the nether do not mix. I mean, you can't make a nether portal in the end, so the two seem pretty exclusionary. That is, until we do something like this. If we go into the world files of the game and switch out the folder called dim1 for another world's file, we can actually swap out the dimensions for new ones, meaning we could have our nether be the end, or the overworld. And believe me, it's as confusing to pull off as it sounds, but it can also look quite cool. And with that, folks, amaze that subscribe button below and have a good one. All right.